Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and the GPD WinMax, which as you can see is a little computer that comes with Windows 10 preloaded. Has an Intel Core i5 Ice Lake processor with Iris Plus graphics, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, and it's a device that really is a full-fledged computer that you could use for all sorts of different things, including theoretically operating different operating systems. But in practice, I find that loading different operating systems, at least as of the time I'm shooting this video on May 17th, 2020, is a little bit difficult. They don't all, uh, well, actually I can't find anything other than Windows that really runs properly. So I'll show you that a little bit later in this video. But first I wanna talk about a couple of other power user features and options. Uh, the first thing to point out is that you can remove this bottom panel if you wanted to upgrade the SSD. And if you look closely, you might be able to see the SSD underneath there. It's not super easy, but it's also not super difficult to be perfectly honest. You just have to remove all the screws that you see here with a tiny screwdriver, pry open the case, and then uh, lift off one of the two fans in order to get at the SSD. You may also have to detach the battery cable in order to uh, work freely in there because the battery is actually attached to this part of the case. So if you don't detach it, then you're sort of gonna have to hold it open. Uh, so upgrading the SSD is possible. Upgrading the RAM is not, and like most laptops, up, uh, the processor is pretty much the processor, which is a quad core eight thread chip, which is a pretty, uh, powerful processor, especially because the version that is included in this laptop runs at uh, 25 watts by default. That's how it's configured by GPD out of the box. Um, now what you might notice here when I've pulled up the HW monitor utility is that it's a quad core processor with four cores and eight threads running at around three to 3.6 megahertz. Uh, right now it's not doing very much, so the TDP is not going super high, but it sort of bounces around a little bit. If we wanted to stress it, we could open up a tool like Prime 95. And you can see now we're up to about 30 watts that it's running at. And you can also hear the fan kick in pretty loud. So that's something that you, you wouldn't necessarily get all the way up to 30 watts with a typical laptop shipping with this processor, but that's the out of the box setting here. Now, what if you don't wanna go that high? What if you don't want the fan kicking in so much? What if you don't wanna take the hit on battery life? Well, you can actually go in to the setup utility, the UEFI or BIOS, and adjust an awful lot of settings on this system. So I'm gonna show you that next. So I'm hammering the delete key during the reboot here. This can be a little finicky. Sometimes I don't get it on the first try, but I did this time, so that's great. And from this menu, you can see that we have uh, the main screen with information about the processor, the um, integrated graphics, and so forth. Advanced settings with a lot of options. I'll come back to that. Chipset, security, I'll just show you secure boot is disabled out of the box. Uh, boot order, uh, enable or disable certain hardware, and save and exit. But if we go back to advanced here, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see some of these options. Um, we have CPU configuration, power and performance, and a whole bunch of other things, thermal configuration and so forth. But I'm gonna show you two things particularly here. Uh, first in power and performance, if we go to CPU management, and config TDP options. TDP or thermal design power is basically how much power a processor is allowed to use. And the Intel Ice Lake U series processors tend to, by default, uh, be set to nominal, which is that they use around 15 watts of power most of the time and up to 25 watts under sort of turbo boost or uh, other circumstances. But there's also a TDP up option, which is 25 watts to 30 watts and a TDP down, which is 12 watts to 20 watts. And what's unusual about this laptop is A, that it ships with TDP up, and B, you can choose any of these or even customize them. Most of the time, what you get 
uh, pre-configured with the laptop that you buy is what you get, and that's, that's your only option. But here, I can go in and I can say, I'd rather save power. I'm going to be running some tasks that don't necessarily need the, the super performance, and so I'm going to go to the TDP down and maybe try to extend my battery life that way. Or maybe I'll go to the nominal setting. Let's go back to up here, and I'll show you that the other thing you can do is adjust these settings. So say I wanted to go up to 35 watts instead of 30 watts, you have that option. Now pushing past 30, you're probably going to take a stability hit, because uh, essentially what you're doing here is, uh, for all intents and purposes, overclocking the computer. So it's not necessarily something that you're going to want to play with very much, other than sort of sticking with the, the typical ones, but you do have that level of control. You can also go in here and um, change a couple of other turbo settings. And in TDP, actually no, in the uh, power and performance, you can also change the maximum frequency of the graphics processing unit. Uh, I would just leave it set on default most of the time, but if you wanted to, you could change it to a specific setting, 900, 950, 1100, 1200, and so forth. Now the other thing I was going to show you is in CPU configuration, you can disable hyperthreading. So instead of having four cores and eight threads, you could decide that you want four cores and four threads. You could enable or disable active processor cores. So let's say I wanted this to be a dual core processor. So it, instead of channeling its energy into four CPU cores, it all sort of goes into two and disables hyperthreading. Uh, I can envision a couple of different scenarios where that might be helpful. Um, it's not entirely clear that uh, it's always going to help, but let's go ahead and see what happens when we try that. So we're going to hit save changes and exit. Now I'm going to tell you, you should be careful and keep note of any changes you do make because the restore defaults button doesn't seem to work. If I click def uh, restore defaults right now, and go back over to the changes that we made, you'll see that they're still in place. We still got hyperthreading disabled and active processor set to two. So uh, if I wanted to change back, I'm gonna have to do that manu manually. But we're gonna change save, uh, save changes, exit, reboot, and see what happens when this is a dual core, dual thread version of Windows running instead. Let's zoom back out. That is not out. All right, so let's fire up hardware monitor again. And now we see two CPUs and that's it. Two cores, that's it. Still capable of using just as much power, but it's all channeled to those two CPU cores. So if we went into the benchmarks again here, All right, well, it's not hitting 30 watts, it's hitting 24 watts, and that might be because uh, I've been using this sort of nonstop, so the processor is a little bit on the warm side. But if I stop that, it should cool down a little bit. But you can see, again, all of the uh, performance is being channeled into those processors. So if single core performance is really what you need, you can see uh, it did seem to hit a slightly higher uh, 3.7 gigahertz uh, clock speed in this situation. And if I really wanted to, I could try to adjust uh, performance even more. So that is what happens if you adjust some of your CPU settings in the BIOS utility. The other thing I wanted to show you in this video is what happens if you try to boot something other than Windows. So let's go ahead and 
insert a USB flash drive with Fedora on it and restart the computer. And this time, instead of hitting delete key, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hammer the F7 key to get to the boot menu. And that brings us to this screen where I can choose to boot from a flash drive. And when I do, the first thing you'll see is that everything is sideways. Uh, and that's because it seems to think that uh, the display is in portrait orientation instead of landscape, which is not true, but uh, that's, that's what happens. Uh, folks who have more experience debugging Linux operating systems than I do might be able to sort of deal with this. The next issue is also something that I think is a graphics display issue, which is in addition to being sideways, once you hit this point, uh, everything duplicates or actually quadruples. So you'll see that little okay green is on the top, at the bottom, and in those multiple spaces, the text is all sort of overlapping, and it looks even worse uh, if that's possible when, when the graphical user interface for the operating system loads. This is Fedora. I tried Ubuntu, Ubuntu Mate, uh, Manjaro, Elementary OS, uh, Debian, Linux Mint. Uh, some operating systems didn't even get this far, and those that did all sort of have this problem. Now, it's possible that something uh, with the uh, driver or the kernel um, might be able to fix these. That's not really my area of expertise, so I just wanted to show you the out-of-the-box out experience as of May 17th, 2020. Um, from this view, you can really sort of see what's happening, which is that we've got everything sort of overlapped. Um, I'll show you, if you go into the display settings, you can sorta, kinda, make things look a little bit nicer, maybe, by changing the display orientation. There we go. Now, I'm having a hard time seeing what I'm doing here, obviously. Oops. Let's try this again. Orientation. Portrait right. Apply. There we go. Apparently what I wanted was portrait left, and I've just made things worse. Uh, so at least it's in landscape now, but you can still see that it's sort of quadrupled up here. So it's not exactly a stellar experience here. Orientation, portrait left, apply, keep changes. So, you know, the good news is the touchpad is recognized, I suppose. But that is what uh, Fedora looks like out of the box, and this is one of the better experiences that I've had, honestly, with, um, Linux-based operating systems running on the uh, GPD WinMax. So hopefully this is an issue that once more advanced users get their hands on this computer, they'll be able to figure out workarounds. Uh, but for now, I think that uh, it's not necessarily the um, best option. So if you're looking for a portable Linux computer, I think you can probably do better. All right. I need to click that way. Uh, if you're looking for a portable Windows machine, it's a pretty powerful, versatile machine. And you can find more details at lilliputing.com or check out our YouTube channel for gameplay videos, performance, uh, benchmarks, all sorts of other information about this little machine. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back into the settings and see if I can switch it back to quad core and uh, play with it a little bit more. This is Brad Linder with lilliputing.com and the GPD WinMax mini gaming laptop.